Um, before I start, George and Trevor, thank you very much for inviting me, for inviting the United Liberty Alliance, um, because the reality is uh, we're a civil rights organization that's basically doing secession purely based on international law. And our biggest job, yeah, I never thought that I would say that, but at the moment is informing people, firstly, what Jack did earlier, to say what secession is, because most people don't know, and secondly, that we have the right to secession. And it's very sad that in terms of secession, which is not only our South African right, but also our international right, people don't realize it. People still ask the same questions over and over um, because they don't think that you may have it. Um, Ivo that asked earlier, Jack, do you have a, an army to defend yourselves? Hein, do you have an army? Um, I want to actually start off with that, Ivo. Firstly, you may not have an army. While you are busy, like the Cape Party or the United Liberty Alliance and Afrikaans Verenigde Vrijheidsalliantie, you English people, that's exactly the same as United Liberty Alliance. Um, you may not form an army. Of course, you may form civil defense groups. That's also international law. That's a basic human right, but you may not form an army. In fact, Article 199 of the South African Constitution forbids you to form an army. And because I'm basically going to talk about succeeding in secession. Jack put the foundation perfect. He, he actually helped me not spending time on that. Thank you. So I'll talk about the law. What does it mean to succeed in secession? It's got a couple of legs. But the one leg is the very important legal position. Legally, it's not only your right, but the most important of succeeding in secession is that you want to want it. What is the will of the people? For a political party, the will of the people are votes to say, I want Jack Miller in Parliament, or the Cape Party, or Karen, or whoever you want in Parliament. In terms of secession, it's irrelevant which party you belong to. Totally irrelevant which group you belong to, which whatever. You must say, I want secession. Again, there's a lot of legal stuff into that, but I want to start at the beginning. If you decide you want to secede, and there are two routes that you can take. You can either take the political route, or you can take the pure de jure process, the pure legal route, which that's what we are doing. We support the Cape Party, but we are taking the pure legal route. If you want to secede, you've got to obviously make yourself known. Who do you make yourself known to from a legal point of view? Believe it or not, not to the people that you want to secede with. You've got to legally make yourself known to the world the international community. Who's the international community? The international community are basically defined as the embassies in your country. And believe it or not, it doesn't have to be all the, all the embassies, but the majority of the embassies in the country where you want to secede to. Because don't forget, and I will come back to this later again, secession was not written as a law for South Africa. Who can tell me who was the first country to successfully secede? Who knows? You may not answer. <laughs> 1776. Does it make sense? America. They were the first country to successfully secede away from Britain. After that, I'm not sure the exact amount. I think we're standing at 253 countries that have successfully seceded. The last one was South Sudan. Now, not one of those 253, I'm not exactly about the, the amount of countries, not 
two of those countries did it in the same exact the same way. The reason why I say that is because when you want to secede, on the one hand, you must follow the legal route 100%. The legal prescription in terms of international law for secession. On the other hand, it's extremely flexible. No two countries are the same. Everything differs in each and every country. In South Africa, funny enough, we are totally different again because our total demographics, socio-economics, everything is different in South Africa than from the other countries that have seceded. The reason why I say that is you've got to take the law and follow it to the point where you can't anymore. And then you've got to use your, I want to say, basic common sense for your specific situation. What are required for you to secede? Firstly, you've made yourself known to the international community that you want to secede. Then you've got to determine who are the group of people that you want to secede with. Because funny enough, international law does not talk about a folk or a Nazi, or they don't. They talk about a group of people. And how do they define or want you to define that group of people? They say that you've got to have one of, our constitution actually says two, you need two. You need one of the following four points as a group of people and you can secede. Ethnicity, language, culture or religion. There are a couple of other ones in that but it's irrelevant. That's for the Polynesian islands and not relevant to us. So you've got to define the group of people that you refer to. <clears throat> Once you've defined that group of people, and let me explain to you what we've said as the United Liberty Alliance, the group of people that we have defined in terms of that is all the minority groupings in South Africa. Do you know who they are? No, let me tell you. Wake up, guys. <laughs> Can't you hear me? All right. The group of people, the, min the minorities that we've defined, are basically, in terms of those three, not four ethnicity, we, we used language, culture, and religion, and any permutation of that. In broader terms, obviously, you will always have individual or smaller individual groups that also fall into that. It's basically, we've done exactly the opposite that the ANC government have done and we've said not in terms of ethnicity we are basically the Europeans and the indigenous colored people or brown people Khoisan people whatever you want to call it in South Africa so it's basically all the European communities in South Africa with all the Khoisan or colored communities in South Africa. Then the next thing you've got to do is you've got to determine in terms of international law and that is a very serious requirement of which most people talk about it they never get to it. You've got to determine which area. Now that sounds easy. The reality is it's not that easy if you want to play games. Because if you determine the area, you've got to have your legal basis, argument, why that area. It's got to be a defendable legal argument. What we've done is we've said the Western Cape, the Northern Cape, part of the Eastern Cape, which is basically the old Cape province, the Western half, Jack's map showed it exactly, Western half of the Free State and a very small bit that includes Pretoria in the Transvaal. Why do we say that? What is our legal argument for that? Because according to the 2011 IEC statistics, we the minorities, we are the majority in that area. That's the legal argument. 
If you are the majority, nobody can, can, can fight against that. Right, then, once you've got that, now you've got to start with your process of exhausting all your internal remedies. This is one of the, the, the legal points in, in law that are actually totally open. Because it says you've got to use all your internal remedies, all, but they don't specify what does all mean. And if you ask any SC or QC, there are no QCs in South Africa left anymore, they will tell you, no, that's nonsense. It doesn't exist. You can't in law have all if you don't determine exactly what they mean. But it says all internal remedies must be exhausted. At the end of the day, it actually means two things. Firstly, the law of secession was written for the, in this case, the minorities or for the group of people that are not happy with their, they call it, mother country, to try and exhaust all different avenues. And if I say all, we are how many people here, and I can have so many different um, ideas of what this all means. It means all different things that you can think of, including taking them to court, uh, having meetings, writing letters, because everything comes back to the paperwork. You've got, got to talk to the government because that law was in a way actually written that they don't want you to secede. Although Article 1, which was the only law, thank you Jack for leaving that out for me, <laughs> Article 1 of the International Covenant on Human and Political Rights, or Political and Human Rights, states very, very clear that every, and it reads virtually word for word exactly the same as Article 20 of the African Union um, law, which read that everybody has got the right for political and personal and financial and whatever, uh, the right to govern themselves. That is international law. Now, they don't really want you to, to secede, and that's why they say all internal remedies, because they leave it open that you, can, you must try everything possible. Because as part of this all, it also entails a long period. It entails years of discussions, negotiations, fighting, begging, pleading, fighting again, fighting again, fighting again, fighting again, because that's how it goes. And at the end of the day, all of this boils down to one thing. A stack of let letters and paperwork like this to say, my government is not interested in even talking to me. They are not interested in giving so much back. Although we've got Article 9, 11, um, 33, 185, 231, 233, and Article 235. There are lots of articles in the South African Constitution that gives us the right to self-determination in one way or the other. At the end of the day, we got to a point now where the 15th of December 2017, I wrote a letter uh, as the President of the United Liberty Alliance to let the President of South Africa then, Zuma, know that we accept now that all internal remedies have been exhausted. And I mean, that, believe me, was a massive thing. Because if not all internal remedies have not been exhausted, it was up to him to say, no, 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 no. Come back, come back to the table. You've, you've still got to talk. He didn't. Why? Because there's one thing in life which is even worse when you're a politician. That's why I told Pete yesterday he mustn't become a politician. And that's arrogance. Now, if we are honest with each other, arrogance was the reason why the National Party came to a fall in 1994. 
if you believe that the ANC will govern forever or for even many more years, then open your eyes. Their arrogance have already caught up with them. And in the meantime, their arrogance brought us to a point where we could say, we now accept. Remember, we didn't say all external, uh, internal remedies have been exhausted. We say, we accept that it's exhausted. So we give them another chance. Come back. If you want to talk, come back to us. They didn't. Now, that's important to understand because I said in the beginning, succeeding at secession. There are two ways. Not the political party we are using the de jure process. We are in the process now of following the route of secession. I always explain it like this. Here we start and here we've got a lot of work and letters and negotiations and fighting and begging and doing everything. At the moment we are right here. We're right here. This process can go one of two ways now. We are following at the moment, and we will always follow it as far as possible, the de jure process. But it can also follow this one. I'll get to this one now. What do we need from a legal process to finish secession now? Well, when was it? End of last year, I think. We realized one of the things that, I, that we haven't done yet is to have a so-called interim government, because that's one of the prerequisites of a, a, a secession process. And we said, well, that's fine. You know, Pete, Kua, Sunny, Mari, Claire, you are all part of the, of the interim government. But you can't do it. Because the moment you do it, Jack will turn around and say, that wasn't democratic because he wanted to be in it, and I forgot about him. So, what do we now? I, I, I tell, I tell um, Martin, sorry, you, uh, Jack, you are in. You can't do it. You must have a democratically elected interim government. And how do you do that? To have a democratically elected government, you have, must have the majority of the people in the area, they vote as a mandate. Whoa, big problem. Because then we looked at the figures and we saw, working on the 2011 IEC figures, <clears throat> there are, I don't know, exact figure, 3.9 3 something million voters registered in the area that I've explained to you. So, if you want to have 50% plus one of their mandate, you need 1.9, and I said make it 2 million. You need 2 million votes of people that say, I want independence. Now, if you look at a political process, even a political party can't just do whatever they want to on a big scale if they don't have a referendum. That is how these systems work. In this case, you need those people to say, yes, I want independence. Doesn't matter which party they belong to. They must say, I want independence. If they haven't said it, there's no vote. You don't have the mandate. So then we started trying to get the mandate, and I say trying to, because this is a massive problem, because of a lot of different reasons, of which money is one, to get that mandate, because most people don't even know about it. Now, let me explain the de jure process to you completely. If you have your mandate of 50% plus one, or in our case, two million votes, what do you do then? Once you have it, then officially, you go to the government again, and you say, remember, we're the guys that you're fighting with. Remember that letter from the sheriff? Letters from the sheriff. We now demand a referendum in that area. Now, every person that are registered legally in that area may vote. 
Once you do that, then immediately the ANC government will say, yeah, of course, sure, have a referendum, we'll pay for it. No, they won't. But luckily, I don't know if they were guys with thick glasses, long hair, white shirts, but the guys that wrote secession had a lot of foresight. And they made it very clear that part of your process, you must also have, and I'm going back now with the secession process, you must have contact and direct negotiations with other governments that are part of the United Nations. Funny enough, it does not say that you must have uh, direct contact with the United Nations. Some people say it, it's not true. Um, the United Nations, in terms of the secession law, is considered to be just one of these international communities. And therefore, it's good to have contact with them, obviously. The reason why that is important is because, and I'm now jumping forward again, when you get secession, because that's going to come from, from Ivo, I know that. It should. Is that you don't? Two minutes. Twenty. If you get secession, international law makes it very clear. Firstly, you may defend yourself, I'll talk very quickly, you may defend yourself in any way possible. Another one of these funny laws where it's open. Now, what does it mean? It actually means it goes against the Geneva Convention. You may defend yourself in any way possible. But it also says that the United Nations, it doesn't say any other country, but it implies that all one of the other countries must defend you. Okay? Now, let me just quickly, because he's, he's harassing me. If we don't get the two million votes in time, and we take the other route, excuse the pun, what is this? It's a civil war. What are the chances, percentage-wise, of a civil war in South Africa, according to um, a lot of surveys that's, that was done? I can give you the exact figure, but I, will, I would make it very soft on you. Much more than 50%. So we can't ignore this. If a civil war breaks out, because of the route that we've got, the paperwork that we've already got, we can immediately secede. It's as simple as that. The reality is, to go and vote to say yes, you can go to one of two websites, write it down, www.ulacongress, with two S's, dot com, or voteforselfdetermination.co.za. We're not asking a cent, we're not asking your wife or your husband or your car or anything. Just go and say, if that's what you want, yes, that's all you, you've got to do. Thank you very much.